Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Hidayah Binti Jalil So now I'm going to present about Elbow, projection AB and lateral So we continue to the projection For AB The criteria for AB projection are First, medial and lateral epicondyle are in profile Second, coronet demonstrate and on and radial tuberosity C in profile. And third, capitular metis joint is open in olecranon process within olecranon fossa. So, this is a radiograph of an AP projection of elbow because medial and lateral epicondyle are in profile. So, we continue to the lateral projection of elbow. The criteria are first, Elbow is flexed 19 degree. Second, elbow joint is open. Radial head and coronal process superimposed. And third, radial tuberosity not in profile and superimposed the radius. So, this is a lateral projection of elbow because radial head and coronal process superimposed. Okay, next we continue to the positioning. For positioning, the criteria for AP projection, radial head and radial tuberosity superimpose lateral aspect of proximal ulna by 0.6 cm. If more, we can conclude that it, uh, there was an uh, internal or medial rotation. If less than 0.6 cm, there was external or lateral rotation. So the next is elbow joint is at the center collimated field and includes 0 over 4 proximal radius ulna and distal humerus and lateral soft tissue. Third is capitular margis joint is open, olecranon process within olecranon fossa. So the positioning for this projection is incorrect because radial head and radial tuberosity superimpose lateral aspect of proximal ulna less than 0.6 cm which is rotated externally so to improve this rotate the elbow internally until radial tuberosity superimpose to radial head by 0.6 cm so we can t we can measure the radial head and radial tuberosity superimpose lateral aspect of proximal ulna at this area so, tuberosity and lateral ulna at here and for radial head, there was here. Okay. For lateral projection, elbow joint is at the center collimated field and includes 0 over 4 proximal radius ulna and distal humerus and lateral soft tissue. Second, radial tuberosity not in profile and superimpose the radius. So the positioning for this projection is correct. This is because radial tuberosity not in profile and superimpose the radius. We continue to the alignment. For alignment between axis tube and cassette is cannot be determined because there is no four borders of collimation. For alignment between axis tube and patient also cannot be determined because there is no four borders of collimation and the alignment between fashion and cassette is being correct because the distance between the center structure to the edge film on the left and right is not equal and at superior and inferior level is not equal so we can see at this radiograph so the centering point for this radiograph is cannot be determined because there is no four bodies of collimation and the, the standard centering point for projection AP elbow is mid elbow which is 2 cm distal to midpoint of a line between epicondyle. So for lateral projection, first uh, the alignment between SC2 and cassette cannot be determined because there is no four bodies of collimation. The alignment between patient and tube also cannot be determined because there is no four bodies of collimation and the alignment between patient and cassette is incorrect 
This is because the distance between the central structure to the edge film on the left and right is not equal and at superior and inferior level also not equal. So the centering point for this photograph cannot be determined because there is no four bodies of collimation and the standard centering point for this projection is perpendicular to IR directed to mid elbow. Okay, we continue to the collimation. For collimation at pre projection at the superior border, structures that should be include a humerus. Olecranon, olecranon and olecranon fossa. Sorry, this is olecranon and this is olecranon fossa. Okay, at both lateral borders, suggest that should be include a lateral epicondyle, medial epicondyle, and medial trochlea. Okay, at the inferior borders, suggest that should be include a radial tuberosity, radial head. And ulna. So there is no evidence of radiation protection apparatus seen on this radiograph. For lateral projection at the superior border, such as that should be include a humerus, medial trochlea, and coronet. At both lateral borders, such as that should be include a radius, ulna. And radial head. Uh, this is on radial head, and this is ulna. Okay. At the inferior border, such as that should be include a uh, olecranon process, trochlear notch, and capitulum. So this photograph also not uh, doesn't have evidence of radiation protection apparatus. Okay. For exposure factor at projection. The KVP use is adequate for penetration and radiographic contrast. This is because the bony cortical outline of thin structure, which is lateral and medial epicondyle, can be seen, and the bony cortical outline of the thick structure, which is olecranon, can be seen. And the, M the MAS use is adequate for detail and density. This is because the bony trabecular pattern of thin structure, which is Lateral and medial epicondyle. This lateral epicondyle and medial epicondyle can be seen, and the bony trabecular pattern for thick structure, which is olecranon, also can be seen. So we doesn't need to change the KVP and MAS for lateral projection. The KVP use is inadequate for penetration and radiographic contrast. This is because the bony cortical outline of thin structure, which is a lacrimal process, can be seen, and bony cortical outline of the thick structure, which is coronoid, cannot be seen. Sorry. So this cap this letter projection is inadequate. I'm sorry because I said it was adequate at first. Okay. So we continue to the MAS. MAS use is adequate. Why? Why adequate? Because the bony trabecular pattern of thin structure, which is orthogonal process, can be seen, and the bony trabecular pattern for thick structure, which is coronoid, can be seen. So for the KVP, we need to increase by fifteen percent. Okay, we continue to the markers. For AP projection, there is evidence of an anatomical marker shown in the radiograph correctly placed on the right side of the body and placed appropriately, not superimposing any region of interest. But this radiograph uses digital markers instead of plumb marker, which can lead to misrepresent right from left, and this will contribute hard risk for medical errors. Besides, this digital marker also can make the radiograph unacceptable. Okay, for lateral projection, there is evidence of an anatomical marker shown in the radiograph, correctly placed on the right side of the body and placed inappropriately, not superimposing any region of interest. 
to position the marker anteriorly to prevent it from obscuring structure situated along the posterior edge of the film. But the photograph also used digital marker that yeah, it can be misrepresented. For aesthetic value, for AP projection, this photograph does not show the size of film, so the optimum si size film for AP projection of elbow is 24 x 30 cm, which is sufficient to demonstrate all structures of interest, and there is no evidence of artifact on the radiograph. For lateral projection of elbow, this photograph do not, does not show the size of film and the optimum size of film for lateral projection is 24 times 30 cm which is sufficient to demonstrate all structures of interest and the photograph also that, uh, there is no evidence of artifact. Okay, for name. There is no patient's name, ID, date of examination and place of examination on this photograph. So we must put patient's name and ID, date of examination and place of examination every radiograph to avoid from any mistake. So the same thing happened to the lateral projection of elbow. So we must put patient's name and ID, date of examination and place of examination in every radiograph to avoid from any mistake. Okay, for conclusion, for AP projection, this photograph is unacceptable because there is no patient's name, ID, and date place of examination. There is also incorrect positioning with his elbow have rotated externally and the radiograph is used digital marker that can lead to misrepresent. So this projection has to repeat examination. For lateral projection, also unacceptable. Because there is no patient's name, ID, date, and place of examination. Second, the exposure factor is incorrect, which is under penetration. Third, there is also digital marker that can lead to misrepresent. So, based on the reason above, this uh, this uh, projection also need to repeat examination. So, this is my reference. Okay. That's all from me. Thank you.